Hello my dear friends, as a part of the continuation of the ECG series, in this session let me discuss about the ventricular arrhythmias. So if you take this ventricular arrhythmias, we have the premature ventricular contractures, we have the ventricular tachycardia and then ventricular fibrillation. So these three we will be discussing under the topic of the ventricular arrhythmias. The first one let me take up the premature ventricular contractures or the premature ventricular complex. So if you take this premature ventricular complex, it is a premature beat which is arising from the ectopic focus within the ventricle, right? So it is an ectopic focus which is arising from the ventricle that is called premature ventricular complex. Now if you take the concept of the premature beats, the premature beats can be originating or can arise from the atria or it can arise from the ventricle as well. Now if you take the conducting system, the entire conducting system has the capability of the spontaneous depolarization. Right, so we have the groups of the pacemaker cells throughout the conducting system. They have the capability of spontaneous depolarization. But remember, the rate of depolarization, it decreases from top to bottom. So the rate of depolarization, it is fastest at the SA node and the rate of depolarization is slowest within the ventricle that is what is your the property of the heart that is the entire conducting system has the capability of the spontaneous depolarization but the fastest rate of depolarization is at the SA node and the slowest rate of the depolarization is within the ventricle. Now these fastest impulses which are originating from the SA node these impulses they suppress the ectopic impulses from the subsidiary pacemakers okay so there can be atrial premature contracture there can be ventricular premature contracture but remember these ectopic impulses which are originating from the atria or the ventricle they are suppressed by your SA nodal impulses right so that is a very very important point okay and however if an ectopic focus depolarizes early enough prior to the arrival of the next sinus beat then that particular ectopic focus will capture the ventricle producing the premature ventricular contracture or premature atrial contracture so please remember now the entire conducting system or all the cells in your heart are the pacemaker cells. They have the capability of spontaneous depolarization. But those particular pacemaker cells which have the fastest rate of depolarization, they are the one that the capability of suppressing this particular pacemaker potential of the other cells. Even then, sometimes the ectopic focus depolarizes early enough that is prior to the arrival of the next sinus impulse then it will capture the ventricle producing the premature contracture and please remember this point the presence of premature complexes they increase with the age of the individual and they are more common in males than compared to that of the females now accordingly you see a multiple choice question which of the following statements about premature ventricular beats is false sequential depolarization of the ventricles second option wide bizarre notched qrs complexes third option prevalence decreases with the age of the individual fourth option palpitation is a common presenting feature so among the options which is the false statement the false statement among the options given to you are the prevalence decreases with the age of the individual so please remember the prevalence of your 
premature ventricular beats it increases with the age of the individual right and these premature ventricular beats like there can be sequential depolarization of the ventricles and if you take the morphology of the qrs complex they are like wide bizarre abnormal shaped qrs complexes and why is that you will have i'll explain you and palpitations is the common presenting feature in these patients with the premature ventricular beats now now let me take up the mechanism of this premature ventricular contraction this premature ventricular contraction it can be due to automaticity right it can be due to increased automaticity or due to re-entry mechanism right or due to re-entry mechanism right and these premature ventricular contractions they are often sensitive to sympathetic stimulation right they are often sensitive to sympathetic sim stimulation and they can be sign of increased sympathetic tone right if there is premature ventricular contraction one point what you need to remember is it could be due to increased sympathetic tone even myocardial ischemia can also trigger this premature ventricular contraction hypoxia electrolyte abnormalities like hypokalemia and if there is any presence of an underlying heart disease all this can predispose to the premature ventricular contractions but always remember one very important point during myocardial ischemia right or in association with other heart diseases premature ventricular contractures can be the harbinger of sustained can be the harbinger of sustained vt or vf that means before the development of sustained ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation there will be the presence of this premature ventricular contractures now the other important point is how can you make out from the ecg whether that premature ventricular contracture whichever has developed is it from the right ventricle or is it from the left ventricle now there are certain characteristic features to tell you that the origin of this premature ventricular contraction is from the right ventricle and what is that abnormal wave let me show you now you see this ecg if suppose if that premature ventricular contracture has a dominant s wave right if it has dominant s wave in v1 which is of lbbb morphology then it tells you that the ectopic impulse has originated from the right ventricle or the interventricular septum okay you see here if it is left bundle branch block all the waves in v1 should have this dominant s wave and wide qrs complex and w shaped s wave will be there if it is like left bundle branch block but this is not left bundle branch block why because only one particular complex in your v1 is having this particular dominant s wave wide qrs complex right so in order to consider that it is right ventricular ectopic you should have a dominant s wave in v1 now the other important thing is if you want to make out that the ectopic impulse is from the left ventricle then what will be the morphology there will be presence of dominant r wave in v1 so if there is presence of dominant r wave in v1 then that particular ectopic impulse is of left ventricular origin that is your left ventricular ectopic beat right you see here okay so this is your left ventricular ectopic beat right this is your left ventricular ectopic beat all right now now let me discuss what will be the other ecg features definitely if it is like dominant s wave in v1 it is right ventricular ectopic beat but if there is a dominant r wave in v1 then that particular ectopic beat is your left ventricular ectopic beat now apart from that what are the other ecg changes if you take the rhythm in these individuals 
definitely it is an irregular rhythm right why because you have the presence of an ectopic beat right it is an irregular rhythm because this ectopic beat it is coming in between that particular sinus beats okay the rhythm is an irregular rhythm now what about the p wave the p wave you will not have separately in that particular ectopic beat you see this this is an ectopic beat okay the sinus p wave is usually obscured by the qrs complex okay so the p wave it is merged in the qrs complex okay so that is what is the p wave morphology and what about the pr interval the pr interval is not applicable because the impulses they are not conducted through the av node and the impulses they are originating from the ventricle because the impulses are original the pr interval is not applicable here and what will be the qrs interval you will have you will have wide qrs complex right you will have the presence of the wide qrs complex which is nothing but bizarre qrs complex okay right which is nothing but qrs complex which is having a time duration of more than 120 milliseconds and why is that bizarre qrs complex i will explain you coming to your stt segment stt segment like when qrs complex if it is upright you see here this is an upright qrs complex right this is an upright qrs complex so when qrs complex is upright the st segment is depressed and convex upwards and t wave is inverted okay so you see here if you have the upright qrs complex the st segment will be depressed and the t wave will be inverted right the t wave will be inverted that is what is your the qrs complex if it is upright for suppose if the qrs complex if it is like downwards if the qrs complex is downwards the st segment is elevated and concave upwards so you can see that here it is concave upwards and the t wave will be upright and right the t wave will be upright so this will be the ecg manifestations in ventricular premature complexes so if you take the summary the rhythm it will be an irregular rhythm it is not a regular rhythm number 2 the p wave it is absent it is usually obscured by the qrs complex the pr interval it is not applicable because the impulse is not passing through your av node the qrs complex it will be wide the duration will be more than 120 milliseconds and stt changes if you see if the qrs complex is upright the t wave will be inverted if the qrs complex is downward the t wave will be upright right both of them will be in the opposite directions now after having discussed about the ecg manifestations of ventricular premature contractures now let me take up the discussion of why there will be bizarre qrs complex okay so before that you need to know that it is a premature discharge ventricular beat is premature and arises in diastolic period of the preceding sinus beat this is a very very important point when the previous sinus beat is in the phase of diastole at that point this ventricular premature beat will originate right that is why it is called premature discharge next these individuals they'll have bizarre qrs complex why why because the ventricular impulse whichever has been originated and whichever is passing across the entire ventricular myocardium is not the impulse which is traveling through the conducting system of the heart right it is not the impulse that is 
conducting through the conducting system of the heart. Impulse does not travel through the specialized conduction tissue, but it conducts through the ordinary muscle tissue, which is relatively poor conducting medium. Let me explain you. Please don't get confused here. If the impulse originates from the SA node and through the internodal fibers, it will reach the AV node and from the AV node, it moves to the bundle of S and then to the right bundle branch and left bundle branch. So if the impulse is like sinus origin and passing through the conducting system, the velocity of the conduction of the impulse is good. The velocity of the conduction of the impulse is very high and thereby the normal QRS complex will be 70 to 100 milliseconds. But here in case of ventricular premature beats, the impulse is not passing through the normal conducting system. The impulse is originating from the ventricle and it is passing through the ordinary muscle tissue which is a relatively poor conducting medium which has lesser velocity compared to that of the velocity of the impulse which is passing through the conducting system of the heart. And that is the reason why the QRS complex in this will be more than 120 milliseconds. Right, it will be more than 120 milliseconds. So that is the reason why the QRS complex is bizarre, widened and slurred or it is notched. Okay, so that is what is about your bizarre QRS complex. Next, the other important thing is the compensatory pause. So if you take the compensatory pause, the pause following the extra systole, right? You see this, this is your extra systole. Okay, so the pause following the extra systole, that is the compensatory pause, is thus complete. That is, it compensates exactly for extra systolic prematurity. That means, after this premature ventricular contractures, there is no sinus impulse, right, for a period of time. That is what is nothing but your compensatory pause, okay. So these are the characteristic features of your ventricular premature contractures. And what will be the clinical manifestations in patients with the ventricular premature contractures? See, although isolated ventricular extra systoles may occasionally be found in individuals without manifesting heart disease, their presence should always viewed with suspicion. Most of the times they are asymptomatic, right? The clinical significance is that most of the times they remain asymptomatic, but so most of the times they are asymptomatic, they are benign and they can be neglected also. But if there is multifocal ventricular extrasystoles and ventricular extrasystoles in pairs, they are always abnormal, right? They are always abnormal and they are usually indicative of serious myocardial disease. So that's a very important point you need to remember. If ventricular premature contractures, if they appear in couplets, if they appear in pairs, and if they are like multifocal ventricular extrasystoles, that indicates a serious myocardial disease. Now, what will be the clinical manifestations? They commonly present with palpitations, lightheadedness, fatigue, and syncopal attack. But the most common symptom is your palpitation, right? And why do you think they will have lightheadedness, fatigue, and syncopal attack? All these are because of decrease in cardiac output if the number of premature ventricular contractures are more. Next, the other point is unifocal ventricular extrasystoles, they are usually indicative of cardiac disease. If they occur frequently, right, if these ventricular premature contractures, they occur in crops or showers, that is indicative of the cardiac disease. And if these particular Premature ventricular contractures, if they occur in bigeminal rhythm, that is indicative of cardiac disease, right? If they occur in association with other cardiac disease, 
that is also suggestive of the cardiac origin of your ventricular extrasystoles and if they are precipitated by exercise and if they occur in person over 40 years of age they are usually indicative of cardiac disease okay next now after having discussed about the features of premature ventricular contractures let me discuss what are the etiologies of premature ventricular contractures which of the following will not cause premature ventricular contractures hypokalemia hypermagnesemia digoxin toxicity myocardial ischemia the answer to this particular question the hypermagnesemia and i give you the list of conditions which will cause the premature con ventricular contractures please remember there are disease for the development of premature ventricular contracture even simple anxiety can also develop can also make the individual to develop the premature ventricular contractures and next thing is excessive use of sympathomimetic amines next beta agonist like salbutamol terbutalin consumption of the excessive coffee that is excessive caffeine then hypokalemia can predispose the individual to develop ventricular premature contractures but in hypokalemia actually what are the ecg manifestations in hypokalemia the ecg manifestations are flat t wave or inverted t wave right flat t wave or the inverted t wave okay and subsequently right and subsequently in case of hypokalemia you can also have the prolonged pr interval and there can be also presence of your ventricular premature contractures then you take in hypomagnesemia see hypomagnesemia is a clinical condition where there can be prolonged qt interval and these prolonged qt interval can predispose the individual to develop polymorphic ventricular tachycardia which is nothing but torsades d pointers and in these patients with hypomagnesemia you will have the presence of premature ventricular contractures next thing is the digoxin toxicity see in case of digoxin toxicity the earliest manifestation of digoxin toxicity is nausea and as well as vomiting and the other clinical manifestation of digoxin toxicity is your yellow vision and in digoxin toxicity what is the most common arrhythmia that can be seen that is ventricular bigemine so this ventricular bigemine is the most common arrhythmia and that bigemine is nothing but your premature ventricular contractures right i'll just show you an ecg of ventricular bigemine this is the ecg of ventricular bigemine you see that this is the normal impulse and this is a vpc this is a normal impulse this is a ventricular premature contractures and these ventricular premature contractures they appear they are appearing alternatively right every second beat is a ventricular premature beat so that is what is suggestive of your ventricular bigemine so in digoxin toxicity the most common arrhythmia is your ventricular bigemine and apart from that the other arrhythmias which can be seen in digoxin toxicity is ventricular tachycardia and as well as ventricular fibrillation and in digoxin toxicity the arrhythmias that you will not see is your atrial flutter you will not have atrial fibrillation and then mobits type 2 av block these arrhythmias you will not see in digoxin toxicity except for this you will have all the types of arrhythmias in digoxin toxicity next the myocardial ischemia right myocardial ischemia is another important clinical condition where you can have pvcs premature ventricular contractures and in a scenario of myocardial ischemia if you have the frequent or the couplets of premature ventricular contractures they can predispose the individual to develop ventricular tachycardia or ventricular fibrillation okay so this is about the etiologies of the premature ventricular contractures now coming to the treatment of ventricular premature contractures or premature ventricular contractures see those pvcs 
which are originating in the absence of structural heart disease or in the absence of genetic sudden death syndrome in the absence of these two if there is the development of premature ventricular contractures remember they don't require any specific therapy right they don't require any specific therapy okay but in a scenario of structural heart disease or in a scenario of genetic sudden death syndrome if there is development of premature ventricular contractures that is the point when you need to treat these pvcs premature ventricular contractures and another point is if the patient is symptomatic because of ventricular premature contractures or if there is like evidence of frequent premature ventricular contractures that tells that the individual is having depressing ventricular functions next in benign conditions like out of anxiety there can be premature ventricular contractures so in such case like what is that you will advise just reassurance reassurance that the arrhythmia is benign and it is often sufficient to allow the patient to cope up with the symptoms which will often wax and wane in frequency over the years so ask him to see that he should not become excessively anxious right that can predispose the individual to develop pvcs so reassurance is just enough next is the avoidance of excessive coffee avoidance of excessive alcohol consumption that also will help in some of the individuals to reduce this development of premature ventricular contractions for suppose if the individual is like persistently symptomatic like palpitations are there syncopal attacks are there light headedness is there then in such case they definitely require the treatment and the treatment what we give is the beta adrenergic blockers or non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers can be given and these non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers they include verapamil and as well as the diltiazem for suppose in spite of giving medical management the symptoms are still persisting that is the point when we need to give membrane active anti arrhythmic drugs right membrane active anti arrhythmic drugs now what are the examples of this membrane active anti arrhythmic drugs they include flecainide right which is the class 1 anti arrhythmic drug propofenone mexilitine and as well as amiodarone so these can be effective but the potential for side effects warrants the careful consideration so you need to be little careful about the adverse effects of these particular drugs but if the individual is not responding to your verapamil or diltiazem or your beta blockers that is the point when we need to give this membrane active anti arrhythmic drugs or the catheter ablation catheter ablation is effective at suppressing this arrhythmia in about 80 percentage of patients okay so this is about the treatment of premature ventricular contractures most of the time they are asymptomatic they are benign just reassurance is enough that these arrhythmias are not going to affect you and if it is secondary to excessive coffee and alcohol ask the individual to stop or limit the levels of the alcohol intake or the coffee intake and if the symptoms are persisting and if the individual is symptomatic then you need to give beta blockers or non dihydropyridine calcium channel blockers and if that fails then you need to give anti arrhythmics drugs and if that particular anti arrhythmic drugs also fails that is the point when you need to plan for the catheter ablation so this completes the discussion of the ventricular premature contractures and in the next session of the ventricular arrhythmias we will discuss ventricular tachycardia and as well as the ventricular fibrillation thank you very much